Hi guys, Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I've got another tutorial for you. This time, it's to do with UI. This time, it's actually pretty useful. Um, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be adding hovering tooltips over our UI elements. So you'll know exactly what I mean. A lot of uh, uh, TS games do this. A lot of first-person games do this. If they've got an inventory system, it's where you hover your cursor over a UI element. After a second or so, a little information box will pop up and it just gives you a little bit of information about what that item is. And it's really quick, really simple, and it's reusable. You know that we love reusable code. But just before we get into it, I just want to thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got his links down in the description below. Go check him out on Twitter. Go check out his website. Keep up to date with all the good stuff that he's doing. Sorry if you heard my phone vibrate then. And again... And I just want to thank everybody supporting me over on Patreon. You guys are fantastic. So let's take a look at what I've got here. It's absolutely nothing apart from a canvas with four images attached to it. Now, these could be buttons. These could be anything that you like. I'm just using images, plain old images, just as an example. And if we play the game, exactly what you expect would happen, absolutely nothing. But what we want, we want to make sure that when we hover our cursor over the top of one of these icons, we get a little bit of a description, maybe the item name. And we're going to need two scripts for this. We're going to need a hover manager and a hover tip. So let's just go ahead and create both of those right off the bat. Okay, so we've got our scripts ready to go. The final thing that we actually need to do, though, is we need to create our actual tip, the UI for our tip text. So inside of our canvas, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to create, and I'm just going to use an image, and I'm going to call that tip window. Now, this is just going to be a plain, semi-transparent background. I'm going to set the width to 200 because I know that that's the maximum width that I want this tip text to actually reach. And then the height doesn't really matter because we're going to be dynamically changing that. So I'm just going to set that to 50 for now. Next, as a child of our tip window, we're going to add in a text mesh pro element. We'll rename that to tip text, and I'm just going to set that to be 10 points in font size. And then the final thing that I want to do, I just want to change these anchor points for both of the window and the text to be the top left. So if we just click on our anchor over here, click top left, and then window top left, we should be ready to go. So let's start with our tip manager. Let's open this up in Visual Studio. And we know we don't need an update for this because we don't want this running every second. The way that we're actually going to achieve this is using actions and pointer callbacks. So we're going to try and make this as performant as possible. So let's start by setting everything up. We're going to need a public text mesh pro UGUI and make sure we import that namespace. And that's going to be our tip text. Next, we'll have a public rec transform, and that's going to be our tip window. Next, we want to make sure that we set up our actions. Now, if you're not familiar with actions, I have already done a tutorial on this. I'll pop a link up in the top right-hand corner right about now. But really, basically, what they are, we can actually call these from anywhere else in a project and then trigger certain functions if that action is triggered. Now, that'll make a little bit more sense in just a second. So let's create a public static action. Now, action, you need to import the system namespace for that. I'm going to call this on mouse hover. And we're going to need a second one, public static action, on mouse lose focus. You can call those whatever you like. Now, when we actually call on mouse hover, we want to pass in a few parameters for this. And when you're working with actions, we've got to pass these in as the types to the action class. And we're going to want a string and also a vector2. The string being the message we want to display, the vector2 being the position that we want to display it, i.e. the mouse position. And then when we lose focus, we're not actually going to pass anything else because all we're going to do is we're going to disable the tip window. Next, we need to hook up these actions to two methods. So let's create those. So that's going to be a private void your message. 
and a private void hide message. Actually, we'll call that tip. Show tip. Hide tip. Just to keep everything consistent. Now, show tip, the method signature, needs to match what our action is. So it needs to take in a string, which is the tip, and a vector two, which is our mouse position. Now let's subscribe those events. So in our on enable, and we'll also create our on disable as well, what I want to do, I want to say whenever on mouse hover is activated, I also want to subscribe my show tip method. So whenever I call hover tip manager dot on mouse hover, we're going to show the tip. And just like that one, on mouse lose focus, we'll subscribe with plus equals to hide tip. And then remember to unsubscribe on disable by changing that plus equals to a minus equals so we don't end up with any null reference exceptions. And then after all that's set up, we want to make sure that our UI is disabled by default. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set my tip text dot text equal to default, which will just make that null. And then I'm going to set my tip window dot game object set active false. So when we load the game, even if we've not hidden that in our inspector, we'll just disable it by default. And in fact, that is exactly the same as what we're going to be doing in hide tip. So instead of having duplicate code there, instead I can just call hide tip. Nice and simple. Now we can get working on our show tip. So what do we actually need to do? Let's think about this logically. Obviously, tip text dot text is going to need to equal the tip that we've passed in. So that's simple enough. Next, we want to make that background box scale dynamically to fit the text, no matter how wide or tall it is. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to set tip window dot size delta equal to a new vector two. And then we can interrogate our text to see how long this message that we've passed in actually is. But we also want to take into consideration that 200 pixel max width. So I'm going to use a ternary operator here. So I'm going to check if my tip text dot preferred width is greater than 200. If it is, then I want to set the X value, so the width of my tip window to be 200. If it isn't, then I'm going to use the actual preferred width. And then as our second parameter, we're not actually adding in a max height, so we can actually just use tip text dot preferred height. So that should automatically scale our background to match whatever our text is. Next, we're going to set tip window dot game object. We're going to set that to active, so true. And finally, we want to position that box over the top of our cursor. But we don't want it directly over the top. I want it slightly to the right so the cursor itself doesn't actually cover any of the message. So to do that, we're going to do tip window dot transform dot position equals new vector two again, and we'll set it to our most position dot x plus our tip window dot size delta dot x multiplied by two. So that's going to push it all the way over to the right hand side of our cursor. And then most position dot y for the y value. So that should be our manager completed. Now we need this in the scene. So let's go and throw this in. I'm going to put this on my canvas. Then I'm going to hook up the two variables, which are the window into the window and then the text into the text. And if we were to play this now, we should see that our text box disappears. Perfect. But we aren't actually calling those on hover and on lose focus messages. And this is where we're going to use our hover tip. So in this one, we don't need start or update, but we do need to be using Unity Engine dot event systems. And the reason for that is there's two interfaces that we need to attach to our script. So after the mono behavior, we're going to put a comma and then it's I pointer enter handler and i pointer exit handler and then we see we need to implement two methods so we can just hover over that implement the interface and then one for the exit so now whenever we hover over the object we can do whatever we like in here so just as a test let's do debug.log hovered 
and then in the exit, we'll change that to exited. And if we just take our gas mask here and put the hover tip on there, we should get those debug log messages when we hover over the object, and we do. Perfect. But now we want to show this text box. But first, we need two more methods in here. Well, one method and a core routine. So the method is going to be private void your message. And then we're going to need a private ienumerator, which will be start timer. Now, the reason we need this is because we don't want the text box to appear the second we hover over a UI element. We want to make sure that the user's over the top of that for about half a second before that message pops up, or else it's just going to get really annoying. So let's add in two variables, and that'll be a public string tip to show, and then a private float time to wait. And we'll set that to 0.5. And then really simply, inside of our core routine, we'll yield return new wait for seconds and pass in our time to wait. And then we'll call show message. And we want to call start timer whenever our pointer enters a UI element. So first of all, we'll stop any core routines running on this script that may already be running. And then start the core routine, start timer. Now, if we stay over the top of that object for half a second, show message is going to trigger. And then inside show message is where we want to call our hover tip manager on mouse hover. And then remember, we need to pass in the two arguments, which is our tip to show and also our input dot mouse position. And finally, if we leave, we want to disable that, but we also want to stop all core routines again, just in case we've hovered over it, but not long enough to show the message. So stop all core routines, and then we'll call hover tip manager dot on lose focus. And we're almost, almost ready. The final thing that we need to do is make sure that our tip window and our tip text aren't raycastable, because when they appear, that's going to block the cursor's view from behind it, so to speak. So effectively, it's going to trigger the lose focus method the second that it reappears. So you're going to get that message box flashing on and off. Fortunately, this is extremely easy to do. We'll start with the tip window. So if we click that game object, come under our image, and then we can see this raycast target. We'll uncheck that. Same with the tip text. We click that, and this time it's under extra settings. Raycast target, uncheck. And we have our hover tip on our gas mask. So we'll just type in gas mask into our tip to show. We can change that whenever we like. Now let's see if this works. There we go. We hover over the gas mask. We see we have this gas mask label and it disappears when I move my mouse away from it. Now what we can do, we can just jump into our tip text, expand the extra settings, and let's just add a two pixel margin all the way around. That should just give us a little bit more space. And it does, our text isn't right up to the edge of that background anymore. And now all we need to do for our grenade, we'll throw in that hover tip, typing grenade, same for the MP40 and the Luger. If we play again, each one of these should have their own individual message. We see the gas mask, we have the MP40, we have the Luger, and we have the grenade. And just to show you a bit more of that dynamic sizing, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna, for the grenade, copy the word grenade over and over again, just so we can see that text box actually changes to match the size. And when we hover, we see it does. And then back to the Luger, we've just got the small label. Perfect. So I hope that's been useful for you. I hope you've learned something in this. If you have, hit that like button, subscribe, all that standard YouTuber stuff. <laughs> But that's what I've got for you this week. So I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel for weekly Unity tutorials.